Hello and welcome to our presentation on dissimilar metals. The topic today is dissimilar metals and metal conduit and the code changes that have occurred the last three code cycles. My name is Raymond Horner and I am the Director of Codes and Standards here at ACCOR International. I also sit on National Electrical Code Making Panels 3 and 5. Code Making Panel 3 is wiring methods and Code Making Panel 5 is grounding and bonding. So what is dissimilar metals issue? The main concern when using conduit and tubing of different metals in wet locations or corrosive environments is the possibility of dissimilar metals causing increased or accelerated corrosion to one of these metals. Over the past few years, this has become a hot topic around metal conduit and tubing. Many users of our galvanized steel rigid conduit or our galvanized electrical metallic tubing would like to transition to stainless steel conduit or aluminum conduit, depending on the situation. How do they make this transition? How do you make the transition without causing accelerated corrosion? And which types of these metals are allowed to be used together? Well, those are the topics that we'll be discussing today and hopefully providing some answers for you. So in the National Electrical Code, articles 342 for IMC or intermediate metal conduit, 344 for rigid metal conduit or RMC, and 358 for electrical metallic tubing or EMT are the metal raceway articles. These articles are all set up identical and have similar code language. And each article deals with the similar metals under section .14 or .14 of those articles. So for instance, 344.14 would be the dissimilar metal section for rigid metal conduit. But regardless of which article you go to, the dissimilar metal sections all read the same back in the 2014 code language and then 2017 and 2020. So the dissimilar metal section in all of the national electrical codes of recent years are exactly the same for these three articles. So let's look at the 2014 code language. So in tw the 2014 code language states, where practicable, dissimilar metals in contact anywhere in the system shall be avoided to eliminate the possibility of galvanic action. Aluminum fittings and enclosures shall be permitted to be used with galvanized steel. Now, if we look at that statement, what is the issue there? Well, if we look on the side here at the pictures, we have galvanized conduit, we have aluminum conduit, and we have stainless steel conduit. And then if I look back at the code language for 2014, I see aluminum mentioned and galvanized mentioned, but I don't see anything about stainless steel. So in 2014, we offer no guidance in the code on what can be done to make that transition to stainless steel conduit. So fast forward to the 2017 code language. In 2017, we decided to put public inputs in and change the code so that we could provide guidance on the use of stainless steel and making that transition and any impact that dissimilar metals would have on that transition. So let's look at the code language on your screen now. This is the 2017 language. It says, where practicable, dissimilar metals in contact anywhere in the system shall be avoided to eliminate the possibility of galvanic action. Aluminum fittings and enclosure shall be permitted to be used with galvanized steel where not subject to severe corrosive environments. And then stainless steel shall only be used with stainless steel fittings and approved accessories, outlet boxes, and enclosures. So here we're saying, you know, you could use aluminum with galvanized, you could use stainless steel with stainless steel fittings and couplings. But we didn't take the language far enough. So we didn't add in here that you could use galvanized conduit with stainless steel couplings or fittings. So really, you still don't see a way that you can make that transition because we're saying stainless steel conduit can only be used with stainless steel fittings. But we don't mention anything about stainless steel fittings being used with galvanized conduit. So we didn't take the code language far enough. So now we have to look to 2020 and what we've done there. So 
So the 2020 code language, we put in more public inputs to help clarify it and to solve some of the confusion that was in the industry from our code language in 2017. So here we say we're practicable dissimilar metals in contact anywhere in the system shall be avoided to eliminate the possibility of galvanic action. And then we go on to say stainless steel and aluminum fittings and enclosures shall be permitted to be used with galvanized steel RMC. And galvanized steel fittings and enclosures shall be permitted to be used with aluminum RMC where not subject to severe corrosive influences. And then finally we state stainless steel RMC shall only be used with stainless steel fittings, stainless steel boxes and enclosures, or steel boxes and enclosures that are galvanized, painted, powder coated, or PVC coated when not subject to severe corrosive influences and then approved accessories. So let's break down this code language that we put in. So if you look at the second bullet here, it says stainless steel and aluminum fittings and enclosures shall be permitted to be used with galvanized steel RMC. So here, here we put in that missing piece that we were missing in the 2017 code. And we're telling you that you're allowed to use stainless steel fittings with galvanized rigid metal conduit. So you can make that transition. So you can use stainless steel fittings with stainless steel conduit and with galvanized conduit. So that's one transition method. We're also saying that stainless steel conduit can be used with any of these. So any stainless steel fitting, any stainless steel box and enclosure, or a galvanized box or enclosure where not subject to severe corrosive influences. So that's another way to make the transition. Making a code compliant transition. Well, how do you make a code compliant transition? There are many ways to make an NEC compliant transition from stainless steel to galvanized steel raceways. Any of the methods listed in the dot 14 section of the metal raceway articles in the 2020 NEC will work as transition methods. Also, standard stainless steel couplings supplied with IMC or RMC will also work as a, stand, as a transition method from stainless to galvanized steel. And really, any stainless steel fitting box or enclosure can be your transition method from stainless steel to galvanized steel products. So on this slide, we wanted to put together a few combinations of systems that can be used in installations and say whether they're code compliant or not compliant with the code as far as installations and transition methods go. So if we take a look at row one here, we have stainless steel conduit, we're adding a stainless steel coupling, and then we're going to galvanize conduit. So basically that stainless steel coupling is being used as a transition method from stainless steel conduit to galvanized conduit. Well, this is a compliant installation. But now if we look at the second row, we're taking out the stainless steel coupling and we're replacing it with a standard galvanized rigid coupling. So here we would have a stainless steel piece of conduit going into a galvanized coupling and then have a galvanized piece of conduit. Well, this installation is non-compliant. And you may ask yourself why why can we use a stainless steel coupling, but not a galvanized steel coupling? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The stainless steel conduit has much better corrosion resistant properties than does galvanized steel. So when you look at the stainless steel conduit, the mass here of the conduit is gonna be much larger than that of this galvanized coupling. And factor in the fact that stainless steel has a higher corrosion resistant properties than does the galvanized steel, this stainless steel conduit is then use this galvanized coupling as a sacrificial lamb for corrosion. So basically, if you put it in a wet location or a corrosive environment and you combine this conduit with this coupling, you can accelerate the corrosion process. Now there's no guarantee that it will accelerate it, 
but there's a high possibility that you could accelerate the corrosion process and that galvanized standard coupling may not last as long as it would under normal conditions and therefore it could corrode and compromise the system and that's why the NEC does not allow that type of installation. Now if you look at the third and final one we have stainless steel conduit, a stainless steel conduit body, and then galvanized rigid conduit. This is a compliant installation. So we're just trying to show you other things besides couplings that can be used to make the transition. So you could use that stainless steel conduit body or you could swap that conduit body out for a compression fitting or a set screw fitting or any stainless steel fitting and that installation is going to be a compliant installation. What are the main reasons for these changes? Well, one of the reasons is that the 2014 code language did not mention anything about stainless steel with other metals. So it didn't provide any guidance to anyone using the National Electrical Code on how to make transitions from galvanized to stainless steel conduit. So in 2017, we tried to provide that guidance and we added some language into the code, but we didn't take it far enough and created some confusion in the industry. So in 2020, we added some more language and tried to correct that confusion that we caused. And I think we've done a pretty good job, but in 2023, we're going to put in one more public input that calls out stainless steel couplings and allows stainless steel couplings to be used as a transition method from galvanized steel to stainless steel. The other reason that the change was made was to clarify that galvanized couplings and fittings should not be used to make the transition from stainless to galvanized raceways. The reason galvanized couplings and fittings should not be used as a transition between stainless and galvanized raceways is because stainless steel will use that galvanized steel as a sacrifice for corrosion, meaning that if you have a smaller galvanized mass than the stainless steel mass, it could cause the object to corrode quicker and compromise the system. That is all the information that I had today on the dissimilar metals topic, but here at ACCOR we do offer galvanized steel stainless steel, aluminum, and PVC coated conduit and fittings. And we can help answer application questions for any environment that your installation may be going into. So if you have questions on this presentation on dissimilar metals or any other application of our products, please contact the ACCOR Industry Affairs team at industryaffairs at accor.com. That's A T k o r e dot com or 1-800-882-5543. Thank you for watching our presentation.